Hey folks, how's everybody doing today? We're going to do a little bit of a different type of video here. We're going to do a video on safety, and this is for people that are new to this hobby and uh, are going to attempt to restore old electronics from the 30s, 40s, and 50s. Uh, and it doesn't matter if it's an old radio, if it's a, uh, a phonograph, if it's a tube, amp, it doesn't matter. Um, this is essential for you to know if you're going to start getting into this hobby. For those of you that know this stuff, feel free to skip ahead. But um, just want to kind of walk through the basics with you and explain why you need to do what you do. So um, as you all know, uh, when you buy a piece of electronics, generally off of eBay, you're going to get it with a two-prong cord like such. And the two blades of the two-prong cord are going to be the same. There's not going to be a polarized blade there. And that's because uh, the polarized outlets in your house weren't really invented till much later. So essentially what that means is one side of your plug is hot, and one side of your plug is neutral. Now as you can guess, the hot side going to a chassis, for example, is not a good thing. That means if your hot side is going to the metal chassis and you touch the chassis, you're going to get a shock. Not safe. So let's think about how a radio that you may buy is wired. Okay? And we're going to assume that these two dots are the plug, like so. Okay? So really what you have here, you're going to come in on one leg, and you're going to have a switch right here. This is your on off switch. You're going to come across the switch. You're going to have a connection to ground. And then you're going to go up typically to the filaments. Your other side is going to come up. And it's probably going to go to a dial light or something like that. So we'll put a light, light bulb symbol right there. Okay. Now what happens here is when you plug this in, if this is your hot side, Basically what you're doing is you've got the switch on the hot side right to ground, right? So you turn the radio on and your chassis is hot. That's not a good place to be. If you flip the switch, the, the plug the other way, then you're going to have neutral here, which is good, right? But how do you guarantee that? So when you put a, uh, a new cord on these things, you always want to use a polarized plug to begin with. But the way you solve the problem is relatively simple. So what you could do is take the switch, like so, take it off of that uh, side that goes to ground, and we're going to move it up here. This is our switch now. Okay? And when you do this, when you wire your, um, your new plug, always make sure, and I mean always, make sure that the hot side goes to the switch. How do you know the hot side? That's going to be the thinner uh, plug. The wider one is going to be neutral. Now if you look at what we have here, by doing that, your hot side is always going to be switched. And when you turn that switch off, there's no electricity coming into the radio at all. All right? Your neutral going to ground is fine. So that's, that's the important thing that you need to do. Now make sure when you put these plugs in, you ohm them out. Right? You could take a plug like this. I have an example here. Here's a plug. There's the wide blade right here. And you could take your meter on the other end and make sure you identify the correct one. Right? The one that goes to the wide blade. That's going to be your neutral. In this case, it's right here. Okay? It's important that you do that. Now, there's also a notion of safety caps. Now, safety caps come in two forms, right? There's an X and a Y, and there's an XY. And basically what a safety cap is, is designed to, um, to fail open when it fails, right? A typical capacitor that you use, a film capacitor, for example, um, it can pass AC, and it can fail, and it'll keep, pass, keep passing AC. That's not a good place to be. So you want to uh, take your, um, your safety cap and you want to make sure that you insert that in the circuit. Okay? That's going to be really important. So think about what you're doing here. Okay? You're going to be going hot to a switch. You're going to guarantee that there's no, no, uh, no hot current going through this, this radio when you turn that switch off. The other way, not so safe. Okay? So that's part number one. Let's get to the next thing. Okay, here's the next thing. So when you're reading a schematic, um, there's a couple things that you need to know about that. 
So take a look at the schematic here and you're seeing the 6BA6 tube and you'll notice that they have the pins marked pin 1, pin 5, pin 2, pin 3 and 4, pin 6 right there and the question that you have to ask yourself is how do you know which pin is which? Well, that's pretty simple you guys should all know this but we're gonna go through it anyway so um, when you let's pull this shot back a little bit okay so first of all, every schematic that you see is a shot from underneath the radio, never the top. Okay? So um, always remember that you're looking at it from underneath the chassis. Okay? Now, 8-pin tubes have a notch, as you know, like that. And underneath the radio, 1 is always on this side of the notch. So 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. Okay, that's how that works. Well, what if it's not an 8-pin tube? What if it's a 7-pin tube? Well, that's pretty simple. Looking underneath the radio again, there's a space between pins 1 and pin 7. You'll find the space there. Again, it goes clockwise. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. And same thing is true for any other tube underneath the radio. It's always going to go clockwise. Okay? All you have to do is find the key, right? Which is the, it's either going to be an opening or it's going to be, you know, an odd shape in the tube socket that looks like that. No matter what, you're always going to follow it in that direction. But as you saw in my other video, it's also important to understand what tubes you have in a radio, right? You want to make sure that the tubes you have in the radio are the ones that are meant for the radio. As you saw in my earlier video, uh, in the, um, in the, uh, what do you call it? The Emerson that I was working on. Someone had replaced the 50B5 tube with a 50C5 tube. And that's right, Bill, I did say 50. Um, and basically, two very different tubes. So never assume that the tubes are the same. So, um, so that's going to be really important that you uh, pay attention to that as well. Let's get to the next thing. The next thing we're going to talk about is the equipment that you've restored. So your tube radios, tube amps, all that. One thing you never do is leave those plugged in when you're not using them. All right? And you ask, well, why? If you make it safe, like I showed you in the first part of this video, what's the problem? Well, the circuits in these things weren't really designed for the voltage sags, spikes, and, you know, power hits, lightning strikes. It wasn't really designed for that. And although you've restored them and put fuses in and things, they're really not safe to keep plugged in all the time. So you never, ever keep these things plugged in unless you're using them. You can put them on a power strip um, and keep the power strip off. That would be safe. Um, but um, even that is something that I wouldn't advise. I would say just take the plug out when you're not using it. And that's, that's going to be essentially critical for you to do that. Um, you just don't know what can happen with these things, right? And as some of you who work on this stuff know that these things can generate smoke pretty easy. So um, it could take just one component go bad for whatever reason or something occur in the switch or something that you could really start having a problem. So make sure when you, um, when you use this uh, equipment that you unplug it when you're done and don't plug it in until you're ready to use it again. That's, that's a, a rule that I really didn't realize uh, until much later. And um, the person that taught me about that was actually John from Arkansas. Um, he mentioned it in one of his videos. Um, and I think the way he said it was that, you know, electricity is like a caged animal, right? That's the way he, uh, that's the way that he portrayed it. It's, uh, you know, sitting in a cage and it's always looking for a way to get out. And the way it gets out is typically in you. That's not a good place to be. So, um... So remember that, John. <laughs> Never forgot that lesson. So um, so make sure that you keep your plugs out on your equipment. All right, and uh, when you need it, just plug it in. All right, we got one more thing, and then we'll wrap. Okay, the, the last part has to do with um, a little bit of safety tip when you're working on hot equipment. All right, so you've got your radio plugged in, and you're you're checking it with a signal tracer, or you're um, checking voltages. You know, the one thing that's really important is no rings, no jewelry, and you got to take your watch off and move your watch out of the way. Some people, if you have an elastic band, move it up here. But you don't want to have anything on your hands that's, that is conductive. 
um, you could, you know, if you put, just think about this, you put your hand in there, your, your watch hits something in the chassis, next thing you know you're getting shocked and, you know, it's dangerous. So make sure when you work on this stuff that you take the extra precaution. The second thing is never have both hands in the chassis at the same time, right? Because what are you doing? You're completing a circuit, right? And what that does is it'll send electricity through your heart. Not a good place to be. So always work with one hand behind your back and one hand, okay? Really important, guys. It's very important that you do that. That's another lesson that you have to learn, um, that you uh, just have to be respectful of electricity because um, when you're not watching, it'll get you. That's important. So, um, so I hope this helped. Uh, again, you know, nothing prolific here. Mo many of you that, that look at my videos probably know this already and can probably explain it a lot better than I do. Um, but this is basics and stuff that really no one goes over with you um, when you buy a piece of equipment. Most people will just get the equipment out of the box from eBay, plug it in, and see what happens. And that's a bad thing to do. And there's a number of reasons, right? You don't want to plug a piece of equipment in that's not correctly wired or there's broken components. First of all, you can damage it, especially transformer sets. If you plug in something with a transformer that has a short or something, you could fry that transformer and then you're done. I mean, that iron is expensive and you can't replace them. So you always want to do your basic um, you know, amp tests uh, plug it in, see if it's drawing any amps. You can use a dim bulb tester, which uh, which I have right here. I'll show you mine. This is a dim bulb tester. We call it the Buzz Box because I built it after Buzz uh, Buzz's design. Basically, uh, it's a light bulb, switch, and an outlet. And over here, I have amps and volts. And when I plug something in, if I see that amp go all the way up to two, three amps, I know something's wrong. And also, uh, if the bulb, what it's supposed to do is the bulb is supposed to get really bright when you turn it on and then dim down. That's what it's supposed to do. If that bulb stays bright, you've got a problem. Turn it off. That's, that's going to be the key. And to make these things is really, really simple. I can show you what the inside of this looks like. Not much to it, okay? We've got our outlet here. We've got our meters wired in. We've got a power cord coming in. And the power cord obviously goes to your variac, right? And your variac is, you're going to slowly go up. So you're going to start at zero and work your way up. Um, but there's not a lot to these. If anybody wants, wants to know the design, I can draw it out for you. Um, but this, uh, this is a great piece of equipment that you always use for a new, a new piece that you get. <clears throat> and that's how you're going to keep things safe and you're going to protect the equipment. So uh, always use a dim bulb tester and a variac on a piece of new equipment. All right. Um, you know, there's other things that you could do um, from a testing perspective when you get a new piece of equipment, like a radio. Um, you always want to ohm out the coils, right? You want to make sure the coils are good before you proceed. If the coils are bad, um, what's the sense, right? You're not going to be able to replace them, or you're going to have to, going to, have to rewind them first, right? And if you look at the schematic, you can easily tell um, the actual coils themselves. You could tell how to ohm them out. And, you know, coil is nothing but a piece of rolled wire, so you should be able to go point to point with an ohm meter or a continuity meter and see if you've got a connection. All right, so uh, that's an important thing, too. All right, that's it for the video. Um, hope this helps. If it doesn't, it's kept me busy for about 20 minutes. So uh, everybody stay well. Bye.